Uh, welcome back to our live stream, which is about education researchers responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. So my name is Lesedi Sinamele Matlala, and I'm from CHET Education Services. I'm working as an m &E researcher, and I'm based at the m and &E unit. So today, CHET Education Service is launching uh, their Theme 5 report from the Research Bootcamp. Uh, the report is about unlocking the lockdown mindset. It's a very, very interesting topic, um, given the fact that we are in lockdown and the, the, the research itself is about unlocking the lockdown mindset. So today we are joined uh, by our guest, uh, Melissa from Chat Education Service as well, as she's my colleague, uh, and she'll be um, having a conversation with us about this particular theme. So uh, first of all, let me introduce our guest uh, before perhaps we get into the conversation. Uh, Melissa, uh, she holds the Masters of Philosophy in, in Monitoring and Evaluation from Stellenbosch University and a bachelor's degree in Social Sciences from Unhurst College, Massachusetts in the USA. And she also completed basic Mandarin course with University of Johannesburg. Uh, she started her m and &E journey as a junior researcher at an NGO focusing on intervention research in the rural Eastern Cape. She has worked in education research for over four years now and have been involved in m and &E across various sectors. She also has experience in leading field work activities, including organizing logistics, training the field workers, and overseeing field activities. Uh, she's currently working as an m and &E, uh, M and E officer at Jet Education Service. So we are both working as M and E uh, officers at Jet Education Service. She's my colleague. So I'm, I'm happy to have you here today. Uh, so Melissa is going to talk to us about the launching of the report entitled "Unlocking the Lockdown Mindset." So it's a it's a very uh, interesting and fascinating, I would say, study uh, about opening up the lockdown mindset with particular regard to available resources for teaching and learning. So Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please uh, welcome me. Uh, in, uh, welcome me in joining. Uh, join me in welcoming Melissa from Chat Education Service. Melissa, welcome to the live stream. Hi, Lizzie. Thank you for this chat. It feels. I think it's going to be a good session talking to someone I know about the work that Jet is doing. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> I hope this will be a very interesting uh, conversation. So, Melissa. Uh, uh, can you just maybe start with the research bootcamp itself? Can you tell us about your involvement in the research bootcamp? What was the role in the research bootcamp, uh, especially with this particular theme? Um, okay, so I was the lead researcher for Theme 5, Unlocking the Lockdown Mindset and its Untapped Possibilities, which we will get into today. Um, worked with about 12 people. Um, and it was the first time leading any kind of research. Uh, definitely quite a daunting experience for a young researcher like myself, but also um, a great learning experience. Thank you very much. Uh, indeed, it was a learning experience, uh, <laughs> especially producing uh, such a very, very valuable uh, resource. Uh, so, um, Melissa, what was the main objectives of this particular theme? It's a very interesting one, uh, given the fact that we are on lockdown and, and the mindset as well is also locked. <laughs> Everything is locked. <laughs> so, what is the main objective of this particular theme? Um, I think, so to start off, I think everyone is aware um, of the fact that there's a global pandemic happening um and actually let me tell an interesting story so i was watching the news the other day and there's a man who's been sailing around the world for nine months or something and he landed in i think new zealand or australia i think it was new zealand and they wouldn't let him in the country <laughs> um so he was saying what's happening he didn't know that there's a global pandemic happening you know um but he was saying after he learned that he's just like I mean, I'm actually like the most socially isolated person in the world right now. Um, so that was just something interesting. But I think everyone is aware that there's a there's a global pandemic happening. So I think what that means then in terms of schooling is that the traditional model of schooling, which is usually being in a physical school environment, 
um, with the teacher as the main facilitator of teaching and learning, that's not viable at the moment because, I mean, we're under lockdown, there's a global pandemic happening. Um, so in theme five, there were two parts of the study. What we wanted to do first is we conducted a desktop research um, because we wanted to understand what teaching and learning resources are currently out there that uh, teachers, parents and learners can use to continue teaching and learning during this lockdown period. Um, and then, so what that entailed is that we had a team of nine researchers working in different phases. So we had one researcher working on looking for resources in early childhood development. Another researcher was working on looking for resources in the foundation phase and another researcher in the intermediate phase. With the senior phase and the intermediate phase, we divided those into two researchers because there's quite a number of subjects in those um, phases. Yeah, so um, that was the desktop review, just looking for resources um, in, um, in the different phases. And then the second part of our research was researching levels of access engagement of teachers, parents, learners. So what we were trying to understand with this part of the research is um, how are teachers, learners, and parents adapted to new ways of teaching and learning, if at all? Um, we also wanted to understand what is currently being used for teaching and learning during this lockdown period and whether teachers, learners, and parents have access to the necessary resources to be able to continue with the teaching and learning. Interesting. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that uh, background, as well as telling us the research approach, uh, Melissa, that we have used uh, to carry out uh, this research, uh, which uh, you highlighted that you have used the desktop research uh, to, to, to carry out this particular film. And can you please uh, share us uh, the findings of, of this uh, particular study? What are the key lessons or maybe findings that uh, this research specifically has managed to come up with? Okay, so in terms of the desktop review, one of the main findings is that there's a lack of offline resources. Um, the researchers were able to find a number of online resources, which is great um, because it means that some form of learning continue um, through the online resources. But I think then, you know, if there's a lack of offline resources, this means then that we don't really know what's available to a large percentage of our learners in South Africa. So for instance, rural learners and learners in urban areas who don't have access to smart devices and um, the internet and data for streaming. Um, <clears throat> you know, this is, this is a significant finding in that it indicates how, you know, this lockdown period could perpetuate the, the kind of the cycle of inequality and the inequality gap in the South African education system, because what that means then is that those who continue learning are those with access and those who don't have access are essentially left behind and can't continue with the curriculum. Um, so that was the first finding. And then we also found that there's a large focus on maths and science um, resources. So I think this is not surprising, um, <coughs> excuse me, given the emphasis that is often placed on STEM subjects and, you know, getting more learners to uh, take part in STEM subjects. Um, and then the other finding was that we found that the resources available were practical and engaging. This is really important because, you know, it's not you're not on a website with a page just full of black and white text. The resources we found had activities for the learners to do. Um, there were apps that learners could use, um, which is really important because it means like people learn differently. So some people learn, you know, through practical and not just reading the theory. So that was great. And then in terms of the surveys, so the research on levels of access and engagement, we sent out three surveys, a teacher survey, um, a learner survey, and a parent survey. So with the teacher survey, we found that to a large extent, 
teaching and learning is continuing during the lockdown period. Um, over half of teachers indicated that they've been in contact with their learners which is great, but we do need more teachers as well to be in contact with their learners. And then also three quarters of teachers indicated that um, learners took workbooks home, which means learners have um, access to a source, um, to a, uh, sorry, learners have access to a source of uh, offline resources. Um, and then another three quarters of teachers indicated that learners are using their workbooks to learn actually and additionally 60 percent of teachers are setting tasks um, which means that they really have been in contact with learners um, and there is some follow-up so with the learner survey uh, we also found that a majority of learners took their workbooks home before the lockdown and most learners are making time to study although you know not um, structured in the form of a regular timetable. Um, we also found that learners are not studying or spending as much time studying as they would if they were at school. Um, but I think this is understandable given um, the lack of routine that comes with the lockdown. And then um, most learners are using a combination of textbooks, study guides, subject materials, and online resources uh, for their studies currently at home. Um, and then lastly, what's also very interesting is that uh, the, this research indicates that learners are using their peers as a source of support with teachers and parents as a supplementary uh, support. When we look at the parent survey, um, we found that uh, most children in all provinces are continuing with their studies during this lockdown period, and most parents are assisting their children with their studies. And then again, more than half of learners took their workbooks and textbooks home, indicating um, access to an offline source of study material, which is great. And then uh, e-learning is being used by parents with the assistance of teachers to continue covering the curriculum and over 70% of parents indicated that they have access to TV, uh, radio, smartphones, um, with fewer parents indicating having access to computers, data and Wi-Fi connectivity. And then we also found that less than half of the learners don't have access to their own computer or tablet or smart device. Um, and this can present a challenge, I think, because it means then if we're using mainly online resources, I mean, online learning at the moment, then learners, you know, don't have access to devices. And if you're using your parents' device, there's quite a few parents who are working from home. Um, what that means is then who gets to use the laptop? If I have a meeting and my child has a Zoom class session, how will that work? So, yeah. Um, so parents identified a few obstacles regarding teaching and learning at home, um, including how, you know, they don't feel well equipped to maintain the teaching and learning routines. Um, some parents mentioned that they don't quite understand the, the, the subject material, you know, um, so if my child is learning grade 12 science and I've never done grade 12 science, how do I help them? Um, yeah, but I think generally it, it, it seems like more advantaged households appear to be coping because they have access to the required resources such as stable internet connection um, and the study materials for learners to work with. And then, so this was uh, an education focused research project, but we also asked, there was a um, the last question in the survey was about, you know, anything else you want to comment on. Um, and so parents also expressed anxiety and uncertainty regarding, you know, a number of things that are not necessarily linked to teaching and learning. So some parents mentioned financial difficulty um, and struggling to feed their kids currently. There's a parent who spoke about they usually made money selling amakuinya 
on a daily basis and now we're under lockdown um it's not an essential service so they're not able to um provide at the moment um there were also concerns about the health and safety of going back to school um so i just want to read you something that i found quite um poignant um uh, one of the parents mentioned how um I have major concerns as to the implementation and the lack of preparation and communication regarding the following aspects, hygiene in schools, um, the staff, so for example, more teachers and cleaners, um, the need for sanitizers, water, social distancing amongst children during school and their activities and when they are playing the type of masks and the wearing of masks the entire day, the control of public transportation from school to home and vice versa, and how do we control the behavior in the transport? And then this parent also mentioned, last but not least, how prepared are we to handle children with pre-existing conditions as they are more prone to infections? Um, so yeah, those were some of the findings from this research project. Um, and I think they give us great insight into a number of things. Thank you very much, Melissa, um, for the insights. Uh, these are very, very important and critical um, findings, given the fact that, um, well, this research was conducted before uh, the Ministry of Education. They were planning to announce that uh, children has to go back to schools. And yeah, and I, I've had you uh, quoting parents' concern with regard to availability of resources uh, for teaching and learning. So the, the findings are very critical. Myself, having read the report, um, I, I can tell that it will uh, help a lot in informing uh, policy decision, uh, um, um, policy making mm -hmm. in this regard. So, but then let me not uh, dwell in that part because. That's your part now. Where are you going to tell us? <laughs> uh, um, what recommendation can this uh, research offer to decision makers, particularly in the education space? Yeah. Um, so I think what's great about this research um, in particular is that it was quite practical um, and it's like rapid research that we can use right now. Um, so the other day, the minister announced that schools are opening um, on the 1st of June, but we know that this will be a phased approach. So essentially, some, some children are still under lockdown, even though schools are open. Um, so I think the first recommendation, as we'd mentioned before, is that there's a lack of offline resources. Um, so it's really critical for the DBE to provide offline resources that can be accessed by the majority of our learners and also ensure that they find, you know, um, ways to distribute these resources in a safe manner. Um, I think also our research indicated that WhatsApp is one of the main methods of communication that are currently being used during this period to continue teaching and learning routines. Um, so I think the DBE also definitely needs to consider um, a more structured way of effectively using WhatsApp for teaching and learning purposes. And then, um, so everyone is doing like the best that they can um, at a difficult time like this, but there are concerns about learners returning to school. So the DBE should make clear what health and safety measures have been put in place and also what psychosocial support will be provided to learners and learners. Um, and then lastly, while some learners have been able to continue with their teaching and learning at home, there are many others who haven't. Um, and accordingly, the DBE must ensure that uh, the curriculum recovery strategy makes provision for all learners. It can't be a one size fits all um, approach. Um, there needs to be some kind of differentiation in the uh, recovery plan. So I think that's it, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Melissa, uh, for sharing with us those uh, recommendations which uh, 
uh, this, this should certainly come to the attentions of the um, policymakers, given that um, they are research based. Uh, so, you know, ME uh, terminology, we're, we're going to say they're evidence based um, uh, approach, I mean, strategies, or that should uh, at least um, be implemented by the policymakers, especially in the education sector. So that, that that brings us to the end of our conversation. Uh, it was very nice having you here on the live stream. Uh, thank you very much uh, for making this time uh, to join us. And also thank you very much to the viewers who are joining us on live stream on YouTube. Um, we really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Any final words perhaps before I close uh, this uh, conversation that you'd like to share with the viewers <laughs> and the people yeah. that you work with? <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Thanks, Lucetti. Um, I think definitely thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who worked on Theme 5. We had a great team of researchers who were very energetic um, about doing this work and just wanted to do something meaningful during this lockdown period. So um, thank you to everyone. Um, I'd like to thank my co-lead, uh, Diana Mashamaite, who's a colleague here at JET. Um, and also Hen Henry Benson and Tamlin Fleetwood from the Center for the Advancement of Science and Mathematics Education. Um, they were really helpful and really supportive throughout this research as well. Um, and then I'd also like to thank the team of researchers in Theme 5. So um, Herman Mayer, uh, Daniel Mashilo, Dan Langulube, Tulufelo Sidaji. Um, Somila Daile, uh, Kapil Ramusu, Harris Mulepu, and Petina uh, Nyamukondiwa. And also a shout out to Mam Azwi, um, Azwin Dinimasia, who's a JET colleague based in Limpopo, um, who sat in on some of our meetings and gave us feedback on what's happening on the ground uh, in Limpopo. So, yeah, thanks to everyone. Oh, thanks to uh, Charlene and Morunga our coordinators who ensured that people got data, you know, the meetings were set up. Um, because I think the work doesn't happen if there's no structure. And so the coordinators were the backbone to Theme 5. And um, thanks to them as well. And thank you for a great interview. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I was concerned that, well, you should thank me and close it now. <laughs> All right, because I gave you this opportunity, by the way. Thank you very much, Melissa, for joining us today. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Lizzy. All right. <laughs>